Warning. This episode of What's Wrong with Orny Adams contains conversations with my guest about sex, drug use, violence, death, suicidal thoughts, incest, molestation, and skateboarding. Please be aware my guest is very open and raw and frank about his experiences. As a podcaster, journalist, and conversationalist, I felt it was my responsibility to let him tell his story, at times uninterrupted. Please proceed with caution. This episode is not for everybody. Am I gone? Episode 124, What's Wrong with Only Adams? I like to start the podcast like five times. Yeah, I'm catching that. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, is this, was that the right open? Then the music starts playing. We've got leaf blowers going. You got a lot of stuff going on. A lot going on. Jason, uh, Jason Ellis is my guest. Yeah. We're lucky to have you up here. You almost canceled. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't doing good this morning. What happened? I just had a stressful couple of days. Maybe it's it's compiled from, I got a girlfriend, and I'm like kind of in love, and we're thinking about moving into the house together. Yeah. And then I found a house that's like a little slightly out of my budget, and my girlfriend was like, I'll move in and pay the rest of it. And I was like, that works out really good. But it is fast. And I'm like, Phew. wait a minute. Hold on. How long have you been dating for? Two and a half months. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm calling it off right now. It's a bad idea, huh? It's a, it's a horrible. I don't want her to hate me. I know. But this isn't, why don't you stay where you are and oh, have a I trial? Can't afford, oh, I can't afford to live there. Really? I, yeah, I'm already, I'm completely like, oh, man, this is not, I'm completely, like, fucked. I'm, like, in crazy credit card debt. All my cards are maxed out. And the rent is, like, way too much for Because I used to make a lot of money. Now I don't make any money. Right. And it's, like, all the all my savings is gone. Credit card debt. And then I got a divorce. That I'm not really supposed to talk about. But it's all, it's all compiling into... I definitely can't afford to live where I live. And the lease was for two years. Right. So I asked the other day, six months ago, if I could get out. And he was like, yeah, you can. And I was like, okay, cool. So we're going to find a place. Right. And I've been looking for like the last three months. Uh huh. And I've been, every time I look, because I'm a millionaire. Like I, I made it. Yeah. And now I'm not. This is, this is why this is shocking to me. Yeah. And the fact that you're so open about it. Yeah. Uh, I don't care. Like I sucked the dick and I'm broke. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. So you were a millionaire. Yeah. I used to make like over a million a year. On serious, yeah. right? Let me just talk about what you've done. <laughs> Retired professional skateboarder. I'm still a professional skateboarder. This is off of your website. Yeah, well, they need to change it. Who's Tony, they? Even Tony Hawk said to me yesterday in front of uh, DJ, no, sorry, Ad Rock from BC Boys. He's like, Jason's still a professional skateboarder. And I was like, thanks, Tony. Because I still make money from skateboarding. Yeah. And I still do demos in front of like crowds. Right. I'm a professional skateboarder. And I, you know what? I'm not that good. I don't think you ever become unprofessional. It's like strippers. Once you're a stripper, you're I a stripper think, for life. I think if you retire and you don't skate anymore, yeah, then you're not a pro skateboarder anymore. Well, listen, we gotta fi- we gotta fix your uh, website, but let me let me just. Yeah, make, I'm gonna text my manager. And be yeah. like, Hey, make sure you put that back. It's unbelievable. I did uh, a backside 540 the other day. I'm the oldest person to ever do a backside 540. In the world. I don't even know what that is, but we'll... It's good. Is it good? It's real good. I mean, do you none think you the, could... None of those guys over there could do it on that mini ramp that, <laughs> that destroys your life. <laughs> I've got a neighbor that has this... I could go over there and be like, hey, because I bet you they know me. Cause they, they, cause yeah. Oh, for cause sure they Hulk, know you. Because of Tony Hawk. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, that's the other guy on the Tony Hawk podcast. And I'd be like, yeah, it is. Keep it down for my buddy, all right? I, I think they're away, but I do want you to come up here when they're up here. But here's the deal. Uh, let me I just bet get you through you. They suck too. Of course, they beyond suck. Right. But did you watch them, or are you just saying? I that? just hear crashing nonstop. I, it sounds like they're crashing. Can we push you the limits uh, on a five foot ramp? You can push the limits on a five foot ramp. Okay, hang on. Jason Ellis is a professional Thank skateboarder. You. Thank you. From Australia, are you still from Australia? Or is that changed? Yeah, no, you can say that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Retired. From Professional Australia? MMA, yeah. Are you, have you dis- I have retired from Australia, that's You have, true. you've torn up that passport. Yeah, yeah, I know, I still got it, but I'm not, it's over. Okay, well, okay, I guess we don't, uh, we can cross off this question, how connected to Australia do you feel? Yeah. I guess we don't need that one anymore. Oops. Uh, okay, retired, uh, you are a retired MMA fighter. Mm. 
hosted the Jason Ellis Show on Sirius XM for 15 years, now a comedian and podcaster of multiple podcasts, including the Jason Ellis Show, mm -hmm. Hawk versus Wolf. You do yep. a podcast with Tony Hawk. Yep. Uh, and uh, I almost called him Stephen Hawk. That's his brother. <laughs> Oh, there's like, but there's Stephen Hawking. Yes. Yeah. No, oh, the, no, there's just different one. Stephen Hawking. Yeah. An awesome world. In 2013, became a New York Times bestseller with I'm Awesome. Yeah. And then wrote the successful follow up, I'm Still Awesome. It wasn't that successful. That doesn't sound like it was a bestseller because otherwise it would say another bestseller. It flopped. Flop. You know what's crazy? I sold them all on the road being a comedian. Like I didn't sell any of them. Yeah. And now I sell them after the show. Yeah. And they're all gone. Oh, I love dead st selling dead stock. When yeah. somebody somebody it's, orders my first it's just, CD, DVD. Yeah. yeah. It's just free money. It's free money. It's yeah. found Same money. Same with all my old merch. Now all this old merch, I just take it with me. Mm -hmm. Everyone bought it. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know your it's fans. It's 100% profit. 100%. And like, you know you have a good weekend. At the end of the weekend, well, all you have left are like three XLs. And like, yeah. little, little girls are buying them. I'm so excited that I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Because I'm on the road and I sell stuff and I get it. Selling stuff. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, you set the Guinness World Record for the biggest drop on a skateboard, yeah, jumping bullshit. into a 70-foot skateboard ramp. Yeah. Then the record was broken by Danny Way, who can go screw himself. Well, no, I, the, the real story there is they offered Danny Way the, the deal because Danny Way jumped in off a helicopter into a ramp, and that was the record for the yeah. bomb job. And they offered him 10 grand, and he was like, Shh, no way. Okay. And they're like, do you know anybody that would do it for 10 grand? And he goes, yeah, I do. So he gave him my number. So I did it knowing that Danny could beat me any day he wants, but right. they weren't, the Guinness Book of Records were only offering 10 grand. Why don't you re-break the record for like 25 grand? And that can get you out of debt, and then you can live wherever you want to live. Way more debt than that. <laughs> oh, <dude>. really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be all right, though. I own yeah. shares in Liquid Death, so when they sell that, I'll be able to pay it all off. Yeah. I would describe you as a visually exceptional <laughs> guest. Yeah. Uh, for for yeah. my uh, listeners, like, yeah. because the video goes up on Patreon first, then it ends up on YouTube, you are, uh, you're, you're very muscular. <laughs> very muscular. Yeah. You, you look like a guy who can take care of business. Yeah. And you have tattoos all over, including Everywhere. on the top of Even your head, butthole. your neck, your butthole. Not my dick. You have a heart. I'm going to get it, though. Come on, really? Yeah. When's it going to stop? And when, I, when there's just this left. Really? Nah. Well, maybe. I feel like the older I get, the uglier I get, the less like crazy it is to just get my whole face tattooed. Hmm. But I'm still slightly attractive, so I, haven't, I don't want to do this bit. But I just want from here down to have no gaps. Do, uh, does it go straight to your legs and mm -hmm. everything? Wow. There's little gaps that I saw. I still got to get more. Just... Yeah, you got to fill those in. Yeah. Are there ever days you wake up and think, wow, I wish I didn't have any tattoos and I just blend it in? You know what's not really, but being sober now and kind of realizing who I am and what I'm really into, because this is just a... Um, this is just to make me look like I'm a badass. Like, that's how it started. I think you probably are a badass. <laughs> yeah, but... I, I mean, just, you, MMA fighting, all that stuff. But I just wanted to be scary so nobody could hurt me. You know, like, I want to look like I could fuck you up. That's really... But I don't, I don't want to. I'm not, a I'm not a violent person. You're not. I've in, I'm involved in a lot of violence, but I'm not... <laughs> Why is that? Because it's two different people. Like, I don't want to hurt you. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, if I'm at the gym and we're sparring, then, yeah, I'll hurt you, but not... But only like back and forth kind of we're competing. Right. Like if you actually get hurt, I'm going to feel terrible. Like if I, you know what I mean? Like I've hit my friends before where I go, ah, oh, dude, that was too hard. And he's like, yeah. I'm good, I'm good. I'm like, okay, good. But if you're not good, like the last pro fight I was in, I tore the guy's shoulder off and it was like, he tried to knock me out. Right. He almost did. Yeah. And then at the end of the fight, I caught his arm and I felt it snapping and I was like, tap, dude, tap. And he wouldn't tap and he just started screaming and the ref pulled me off. So it was like a, a verbal submission, mm. but I felt terrible. Mm. And I know other guys that when they do that, they don't feel terrible. So then why do you fight? I just wanted to fight to see, like, I wanted to test myself. Yeah. Because I was really scared of so fighting. should be off. Yeah. Dude, how many fight? I, I tried to look into your career. What, how many how, professional well, fights did you have? I was only an MMA, I've only had two pro MMA fights, but I had like a, a couple of amateur boxing fights, but then I made my own event, Alice Mania, where I fought tons of people mm. and some of them were like ufc pros so i at one point i fought 10 people in uh 10 10 rounds straight 
wow. different person every every round. And how did you do? I mean, I got beat up a lot, but I beat I beat people up too. But some of the people were like super famous UFC fighters because they picked them. That was a surprise to me. Oh, oh so wow. like I get in the ring and they go, "Okay, here's who you're fighting." Yeah, and it was Forrest Griffin, like uh, uh, Keith Jardine. Uriah Faber, like people that are like famous UFC fighters, and some right. of them are like really big, and yeah. you know, like Uriah Faber's smaller than me, but yeah, he's fucking smaller. Uriah Faber. He's a, yep. he's way better than me. What and makes I, him better? Faster, faster, more skills. Just like you know, and yeah. back then I was still probably drinking, and I wasn't as in good a shape, and I was pretty tired after the first round because I fought Forrest Griffin first, and he scared the shit out of me. Mm. So it was like a. I kind of gassed out trying to survive. What What does it feel like to be punched in the face? <laughs> that's the difference. I feel like some people, that's the thing that maybe I am a little built for it. Like some people get punched in the face and they don't like it. I I do. Like to me, it's, um, it's kind of peaceful. Like uh, there's like a, 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 a different world that you go to in there. Like if you get depend if you get punched, sometimes I get punched and I'm like, ah, that fucking hurt. Those ones suck. But the ones where you get rung, like you kind of and you're a little bit like fuzzy. That's like the the men from the boys. Like I've been hit where I'm like, <laughs> I'm not really there anymore. But I'm I'm in the back of my head. Like I know I'm here and I'm still ready to fight. But don't you worry about brain damage, physical damage to your face i mean you worry about your appearance you wanted to cancel the podcast today because you thought your face looked fat it was puffy puffy it still is puffy no you look great if i had a black eye i would show up early you uh, should have painted on a black I eye li- i like like damage i like scars yeah. like i would love black eyes and all that stuff or broken noses and shit do you think i should have punched you in the face before we got in here well probably not a good idea yeah, but you like being punched I mean, in the you, face, well, and it's, it's then not, you'd have a black eye. You go on puffy. You got to on puffy because when the like, Adams kicked the crap out of me before we, the podcast. If you were like, let's move around, spar a little bit, and you punch me in the face, <laughs> then yeah. But if you just punch me, I'd be like, wait, did I do something wrong? Are you mad at me? Because that's where I. No, hate. no, no, no. We would have talked about it first. Oh well, then yeah, you could punch me in the face. I, I would. I couldn't even. It's, I physically couldn't even punch you in the face. But I do worry about it a little bit. But I also feel like. Th- uh, you know, I could be wrong, but I'm 52, man. Like I've been, I've been knocked out like over 30 times. I've never. I, I know where I am. I know what's going on. I'm just, I'm fine. Yeah. If it comes, you know, I'm too busy living my life. So before you enter the ring, the moments before, when you're walking down there, playing the music, you're about to get in. Yeah. What do you feel? Regret. Like why did I? Do, why? Why do you always get yourself in this shit? Yeah. Yeah, there's a full feeling of that every time. You're not looking forward to being punched in the face? No, I, I am, but not right there. Every time I walk out and we're about to touch, we touch gloves, I'm like, what is wrong with you? Like, why do you get, why did you agree to do this? Like, you're yeah. not a violent guy. Like, it's this weird. guy wants to hurt you, and you're like, yeah, like, let's cut weight and fight. I'm like, this is a, such a terrible idea. What's- but once it gets going, that's the thing that I like. It's like the being in the zone, you know? And what's more gratifying to your soul? Being punched in a professional fight in the face or being punched in the face on a street fight? I hate street fights. There's nothing good about it, yeah. ever. Win or lose. But does your appearance draw people into, like, starting with you? Like, I, I, no, I like- mean, no. Most people are like, oh, shit, and they don't want to fuck with me, mm-hmm. you know? So that's that's the good thing. That was the whole point of being like this. Is I don't want to fight. Yeah. I just want you to fuck off. You know. <laughs> or if you, but if you are like being a bully, then that that's the only time that I would do anything. Like if you're fucking with women or something, or somebody who's like way smaller than you, then I'll probably say something. But I still I don't want to hurt you. I'll be like, hey man, stop, or I'll do something. Hmm. And if they're like, oh yeah, and I'll probably try to like choke you out a little bit make you stop you know not i don't want to hurt anybody man yeah. i'm not into i believe that i'm not a, like yeah i'm gonna f- you're never gonna wake up you know i i say because i'm from australia i grew up in a violent world like mm-hmm. i'll t- you mean i'll change your face your face will never look the same again like that's a threat that i've made mm. but i don't want to do that right it's just like this thing that i have in me forever it's like my accent i've been living here for fucking ever why do i talk like this 
Did you? Because it's just, your tongue moves like that. It's, it's not going to change. Yeah. It's, Accept it. You're from Australia. It sucks. A little bit. I've been there. I know what's going on. I did a roast last night or the night before. I can't remember. I'm so fucking tired. <laughs> where where my friend was, I, I told him my jokes. He's like, try to say it really slow and clear because your accent, it's hard to understand what you're saying. And I was like, fuck, man. Like, I'm not... Yeah. It's not that bad. It's not bad at all. Yeah. You're you're easily understood. We met at the comedy store. We yeah. were doing a show in the belly room. I saw now I I know of you. I, mm. I know your name certainly from Sirius XM and I've heard your name, but I, I don't know you. Yeah. And you were watching my entire set. I know I thought, you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you do? Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I don't like the way you said that. What? It was very sort of like uh you got the dirt on me. No, no, no. you just you're like a Proper, you're one of the proper guys, you know? Hmm. You've been through it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, we can talk about that because probably some similarities with, you know, going through it, paying the dues, the pain. Mm. It's, a, it's a lot. You know, it's not physical, but it's a different damage to the brain. It's just bad. Yeah. I've had both, and I can tell you, yeah. like, sometimes it's worse. Yeah. I'd rather you just broke my arm and punched me in the face, quite frankly. Yeah. yeah. So I went into the, I did my set. You watched the entire set. Yeah. Uh, we didn't really, con- I, I sort of walked by you, but, you know, I'm a type of guy, I don't initiate hellos very often. Me neither. You don't either. So yeah. now we're, we're two guys that probably should have said hi, <laughs> probably regret that we didn't say hi, you know. <laughs> I'm so bad at that shit. Yeah, I'm too. It's such a, yeah. it's an insecurity. Yeah, that, that's it, what it is, it, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why I can't. And then I sat in the green room area and you came back and we just started talking. And I don't have many people on my podcast. I just don't. I don't. I do most of them alone. Okay. I I enjoy it. Uh, I have to really like somebody. In fact, a lot of people ask to come on. I I think, I don't know what I would ask that person. Yeah. And I don't think they'll be real. I don't need fake laughing. Yeah. I don't need stories you've told a hundred times. Yeah. I don't, I, I, I want it to be raw and genuine, almost like two people like sitting next to each other on an airplane. Yeah. And the minute we started to talk, I go, this guy's cool. He's, you're being real. I could mm. tell you were being real. I opened up to you immediately uh, a story about doing somebody else's podcast, which they never aired. I don't want to say who. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. And, uh, I, and, I, and I got home and went, why did I feel comfortable telling Jason Ellis that story? Yeah. Like, it was strange. So I felt a connection, and I thought, I want to talk to this guy. You know, I started this podcast uh, before COVID, and what it was, I was secretly recording people in public that were interesting. And they were like, you know, some were gangbangers, some were, you know, uh, organized crime. And- You were secretly recording people that have that background. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's edgy. Uh, I've always- Like, did you play it? Yes, some of it. How are you? Because two things- You didn't give them the name, nobody knows the name. No, what, what, some you would talk to for a little bit and then say, hey, can I record it? And they say yes, and then okay. you've got the release. They didn't know you were recording before that. Okay. The other thing is um, one person we disguised because they were involved in gangs, and I said, have you ever told these stories before? He opened up to me, and I, yeah. I said, have you ever told these stories before? And he said, no, if um, anybody heard them, they'd get me killed. Wow. And so I've always, for some reason, that, those I've always um, not connected. I guess connected, but they they they've respected me for whatever yeah. reason, and because I don't really judge. Yeah. I, I sort of just have like tell me a story, what's going on, and I'm I'm curious. Yeah. And so they open up. You know, I told a story on this podcast about being in New Orleans, and I ended up uh, spending the day with some some mobsters that sort of saved me from a bad neighborhood I was in. Yeah. Yeah. I was just walking around this neighborhood in New Orleans, and these two guys. Uh, I walked past this restaurant. It looked like a, just a nice neighborhood. And I walked past this restaurant and I said to these guys, this is a good place to eat. And they looked up at me and they go, what are you doing here? I go, what do you mean? And they said, you shouldn't be in this neighborhood. I go, well, this is a nice neighborhood. He goes, see those two guys on bikes? They're, they're following you. They're, they're going to mug you. Wow. And they said, uh, sit down, I'm going to buy you uh, lunch. Fuck. And I spent the day with them and they were all, they were like Creole mafia and they took me around. They got me into every music venue that you couldn't get into. They showed me the streets. They showed me where to walk, how to avoid things and how you to get- You just walked into that? Walked into that. And they actually took me to one of the houses. It was, it was fascinating. And I never- like you do that a lot. I, I uh, well, you know- yeah, and you know the other end is one of my best friends 
is a huge FBI profiler. Yeah. So I sort of have, you know, his brother is a, a big sniper in the FBI. Yeah. And they were supposed to be here at eight in the morning. They canceled. Almost everybody canceled today. Wow. So they they um they took me around. They said, when somebody comes up to you and they say, Do you want to buy drugs or they something in New Orleans, what do you say? I said, I, I just keep walking. Yeah. They said, Don't don't do that. It, it's just gonna cause them to be more upset. He said, just what look at them doing? and say, uh, say, uh, I'm local. And then they they let you go because oh, they don't okay. run the scam on locals. So the next day, they have this weird scam you should know about in New Orleans where they'll walk up to you, somebody and say, I bet I can tell you where you got your shoes. Yeah, I don't fuck with that. Right, and, and you're supposed to say, I, I got them at Nordstrom. And, and they go, no, you got them on the street. Like, they're right there. Wow. Pay me the 10 bucks. And if yeah. you don't pay, all of a sudden, a, a gaggle of people come around you. Yeah. And so a guy came up to me, sure enough, and said, uh, I bet I can tell you where you got your shoes. And I said, uh, I'm local. And he goes, carry on, local. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work on me. Yeah. See, those are the good things about being looking like an idiot. Yeah. It I'm, doesn't. I'm uh, like, don't fucking do it, dude. Yeah. And they don't. But did you come, like, from Australia? What, <laughs> why are you in this world? This Like, did you come from, you know, <laughs> why are you in the world? Why are you in America? What why, happened the, to the, me? Like, fighting world. Like, what? Oh, well, what, fighting, did, I'm scared of fighting. I was always scared of fighting. I used to, like, my dad was somebody that hurt a lot of people, and it was always like a... Um, How so? He... If you cut him off, he would get out of the car and beat your ass. I've seen him punch people's teeth out of their face. Wow. Knock people out with one punch lots of times. He was uh, had a real crazy temper, and and uh, his friends were violent as well. They had a lot of drinking and a lot of violence. Like Sometimes they would punch each other because they would get so drunk that they would have an argument and they would punch each other. Hmm. So I just grew up in a violent kind of it's a weird thing because when i was really young it was very violent and then my dad left my mom and got with my stepmom and kind of like became like a, a grown-up hmm. of sorts and then my other my two brothers half brothers he became a good role not a good role model but like he at least all the bad things he kept hidden from them right. for me i saw all of it and my mom had a boyfriend that shot up heroin and stuff in front of me like tried to give me meth when i was 10 a little early for math. Yeah, I wasn't that tired. Uh, but all these things were... What part of Australia is this? Melbourne. And what did your dad do? Jeez, Melbourne. I had a brawl break out of my show at Melbourne. In it? In it. Like, well, like, well, you're telling jokes and now there's a brawl. Yes. That doesn't sound... And like... one guy started to beat another guy with the... You know the thing you pull the pizza out of the oven with? That wooden thing? How did he get that? I, I, that's what I... The mystery. Who has that? I have, I have video of it. Of the brawl. And I've never, because we were recording, I, I've never released it because Why? I think it makes, it doesn't put Australia in a great light oh, and certainly cares? not that club. And I didn't want that club. But what about now? It's Maybe been, now. Yeah. If, if I had the energy, I would have found the clip and I would have showed it on this podcast. I shouldn't, but I love watching those fights. I can't stand it. I can't, it's such a weird thing because I hate being involved in them. I'm not, that's the other thing. From training and being around, because that's the other thing. I, fought, I fight real tough people, proper tough people. So that's a, I know I'm not that tough. Like whenever when you like say the, you fight, where do you fight? I I spar every Tuesday night at the at Trinity on Melrose at mm -hmm. a boxing gym. So I just box now. I don't do MMA because yeah. my legs and ankles have not they're not that great. So it's like risky to let people kick them and pull yeah. on your ankles and stuff. So I just box. And mainly, if if you're not that good, I just let you hit me and I show you like your mistakes and stuff. But every now and then, there's a young guy in there that thinks he's pretty hot, and I'll beat his ass. Wow. I, and that's my that's my joy. Do you wear those the, the protective gear? No. Do they? They do, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So your dad's in Melbourne. What type of work does he do? He was an uh, he owned an electronics store. Oh. Electronics. Oh. My grandmother and my grandfather owned it. My grandmother was like the brains behind it. She passed away at fifty one of breast cancer, Ooh. and then my dad was kind of the boss because my grandfather kind of lost it. And there was a time there where it made a lot of money. There was a time where it didn't make any money. Mm -hmm. Then there was a time where it did make money. And my dad was just like, bought expensive cars, like, burn it all. Then he went bankrupt like three or four times in oh, all our names, the kids' names, my stepmom. I'm seeing a pattern. He was like one of those guys. He always told me never get a credit card. You know? And I was like, I'm not going to be like you, you know? Oh. But there was a lot, of a lot of similarities. He was a dog, always uh, sleeping with other people, cheating on his wife all the time. Mm. I did that too. So a womanizer. So I grew up being, if you're a womanizer, if you sleep with everybody and you are the winner, you know, like you win the car race, you win the fight, 
you win the argument, you drink the most. Like, that's a cool guy, you know? That's mm. a badass. It was just like the environment you grew up in. Were other kids' parents just punching people? No, no. I was like, when my brother started being around, it never happened in front of them. It was just, I had like a, a, no boundaries because I was from another relationship. Mm. So Jason had just grew up already in it. So it was why well, take him out of it. So whenever they're all drinking and doing drugs and fighting each other, I just was there. I just saw it. So you're the oldest. Yeah. Yeah. My brother, my brothers never caught public transport when they were growing up. I never got a ride anywhere. Like huh. I caught trains and buses yeah. everywhere I went. I'm just not. We're not similar. And we grew up in two different worlds completely. Oh, okay. Like when I got older and I was living, I would I'd come to America and I'd come back and stay at the house with them. My stepmom hated me because I was like a, I was smoking blunts and you know what I mean? I'm, I'm a yeah. fucking pro skateboarder jerk off. And, yeah. and she's like, I don't want you rubbing off on my kids. Now I, I didn't see it then. But now I, I understand. Because I was like, why do you hate me? But now I totally get it. You were the... Oldest and only from that relationship. Yeah, oh. and my mom hated my stepmom. They were friends. Okay, and my dad left my mom oh, for her. What a dog! Yeah, he so is. it was like yeah. a, it was like a real burn. They is never, she, they still don't like my mom. Still doesn't want to talk to her. Is he? Uh, I he's can imagine. Dead. Oh, he's dead. Yeah. Uh, when did he uh, die? He died when he was fifty three, which is. I'm also a little panicked about that because I um, we have a lot in common. I'm like, don't die, Jason. How did he? He, uh, my brother was a supercross guy, and we we have a house in the mountains that we built when I built half it when I was a kid. It's like, uh, and there's snow up the top, and there's people in Australia that pedal the bikes from the bottom to the top to train for the Tour de France. Mm. It's very windy and very steep. And my brother, being a supercross guy, because those guys have crazy cardio, he pedaled up it and back down and got back down and said, "That's the hardest thing I've ever done physically." Like, that was so fucking difficult. My dad, the next day, who doesn't... Yeah. He's not hes not unfit, but he's not a guy that goes to the gym. He doesn't, I've never seen him run a day in his life. <laughs> he's a drinking moron. Yeah. He took my brother's bike and pedaled up there and fucking died of a heart attack on the top of the mountain. Oh, wow. Very competitive. And my brother and I totally knew. Mm -hmm. He just He was going to come down and go, wasn't that fucking hard? That was the whole fucking thing. That was yeah. the whole reason he was going up there. And at one point where he was like, probably couldn't breathe, he was like, no, nah, I'm going to make it because I'm going to come back down and tell Lee's a pussy. Like, yeah. And it's not really like I'm trying to be mean to Lee. He's just trying to be funny. Right. Like he would have thought it would be funny right. to say to Lee, I did it. So how fucking difficult can it be? That's one hell of a midlife crisis. Dude, he was in a constant midlife crisis. Constant. That was like that. That was the thing. The boundaries were. My brother didn't know. Like I was sleeping with people that he was sleeping with. My dad was like going to strip. I was going out with a stripper, and my dad would call me and be like, "Hey, is your chick working tonight?" Because he didn't want to come in when my girl was there because it was t in Australia. It's totally nude. Right. He's trying to be respectful and not see my girlfriend's pussy. Right. But he was seeing somebody who was a friend of my girlfriend's. They were the same age. Right. I was like fucking twenty seven. How do you know he didn't sleep with your girlfriend? Well, she would have told me. She well, I, you know what? I feel like she didn't. But there was, was there was other girl. There were his friends that were like forties and thirty eight and whatnot. At one point, they started fucking me at parties. Uh huh. And then I'm working for my dad, and he goes, "I go, I go. You're not going to believe because it was I'm, at one point. I'm seeing this girl. There's three sisters, and they've all got husbands." They're all friends with my dad. One of them has grown up with my dad. They were neighbors when they were kids. I'm fucking one of them on the regular. Mm -hmm. She ends up leaving her husband, who I loved. Like, I looked up to him. Yeah. Crazy guy. You know what I mean? Shooting guns and fucking. Yeah, you He's a little like, worried they're, there? They're all bad. Mm -hmm. About getting beat up? Or shot? Mm -hmm. It's a good way nah, to get shot. I didn't, think that the, I didn't think that this guy would kill me, but I didn't want him to not like me. That was going to hurt me. But also, I had no self-control. If you wanted to have sex with me, I would just do it. Hmm. I only got self-control of my penis like fucking a year ago. It's no, low T. Six months ago. It's low T. Yeah. Like, only now am yeah. I like, no, not, not really. You know? Like, and I, Bet and you're I, happier. Yeah. It's night and day, dude. Like, I get, I'm getting emotional just thinking about how I'm not that guy anymore. Like, in St. Louis this weekend, some fucking chick in the reception was like, 
I'm on it. Like, and I was like, I, that's really cool that you would want to be, you know, and, and then but she yeah, I got, got this my, girlfriend of two and a half she, months. She got my gonna number. Move in. She got my number from the hotel. Cause in text from the me. hotel, she was the receptionist. At the oh hotel. yeah. And because she got my number. She started texting me that night. This stuff Old never, man. this stuff never happens to me. Is she attractive? You lie. Oh, yeah. I'm not lying. People want to bone you. No, they don't. At all. Uh, Comedy shows after the show. No. Yes. No. Never. Never. Very really? rare. Very okay. Okay. rare. Okay, but it does happen. I I would say it's probably something that I, I, somebody I'm not attracted to. Yeah. But it's not like, you know, when other comics talk about what happens on the road, that doesn't happen to me. I finish my shows. I, it's, I sell my merch. I go back to the hotel and go to bed. Yeah. And then I do it all over That's again. That's what I do. I've never been into drugs, drinking fine. Oh, ever? I've never done anything. Wow. Yeah. It must be cool, man. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I, d- I did everything. And then, whoops. We're, what's great is we're in the middle of five different stories right now. We yeah. still have to talk about the ramp next door. Mm-hmm. We still have to finish you, you boning movies. three different women. You got to go back yeah. to your dad. Oh, yeah. and Let's his- go back to boning the women. Okay. So this girl that I'm seeing on the regular, right? I, I don't want to say her name. She was like 48, I think, and I was like 17 when it first started. Maybe 16 when the first time she did it. Yeah. And then uh, she's got a sister. So I'm at a nightclub, and I get on the loudspeaker, Jason Ellis, you have an emergency phone call. And I'm like, oh, shit. And I go get the phone, and it's it's the girl that I'm seeing on the regular's sister. And she goes, hey, what are you up to? And I'm like, what do you mean what am I up to? I'm in a fucking nightclub. How did you – why would you do this phone call? She's like, we're having a party. I'm going to come get you. And I was like, okay. So she gets a taxi to the nightclub, and I'm waiting for her out front, and then we get a taxi back, and she goes, let's pull off at the beach for a second. And I was like, why? And then, because she wants to bone me. So I fuck her on the beach, because I can't say no. I've never <laughs> said no to anybody. Well, why would you do that? Right. So I bone her, and I remember it was like sand. There was a lot of sand, and I was like, this, this can't <laughs> be good. She's got to be drunk. Then I go, Then she brings me back to the house, and then the other one sleeps with me. So and then I tell my dad the next day I go, you're not gonna believe who hit me up in the nightclub last night. And he goes, who? And I tell him, and he goes, you gotta be joking me. And I go, what? He's like, I'm going to lunch with her tonight. And I was like, lunch? Oh my god. And then I realize he's banging her. So you and did sleep with somebody that your dad had slept with? Several. Just not in the strip, maybe in the strip club, but I don't know that. You have such a different life than me. So different. It's not good. I don't feel good about those. So, yeah, what do you feel? Do you feel... I feel... Uh, dirty? Yeah, I feel dirty. I feel disgusting. I feel like a bad person. Um, I feel like I can't be trusted. A dog, you know? Just like my old man. Do you tell your current girlfriend this? I've told her everything. Not to trust you? No, well, now he can. Well, now you can because yeah. of the low T. No, it's, I don't have low T. I have high T. I'm on testosterone replacement. But don't you think that... I just got cured because of my last relationship with my wife that I loved, still love her, I ruined it. And it's this is it to me. Like, I'm 52. I lost my job. I lost my wife. I don't see my kids as much because they live with their mum more. I mean, they're getting older now anyway, but still, they don't want to stay at my house anymore because I've been open on, you know what I mean, on podcasts about being bi and I had OnlyFans and all these things that I did where I was just going, 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 just not really thinking about stuff, just taking whatever I want, doing what suits Jason. And then when I lost her, I realized that, you know, I don't, I don't even really want to be alive anymore. I don't really care. I was thinking about killing myself. And I was like, well, before you kill yourself, why don't you try to get to the bottom of it, you know? Like, it can't get any worse. Like, let's get to the bottom of it and really figure out what you are and and why you do all these things. So I got sober, and that was really difficult. Then I started going to meetings, and I got a sponsor, and I started doing the steps and did all the work and started analyzing myself, started praying, because I don't believe in any of that shit, but I was like, I'm not joking. Like, I woke up every morning, I put my gun on my table, and I'm like... Why not? Hmm. Tell me why not. You know, and it would always be my kids. That's it. But I was like, man, almost, man, almost. If you do it, you might be helping them because I just had that much of a bad opinion about myself. Hmm. I was like, if you're not here, you might. They might be better off. But I was like, come on, man. Like when they know 
you did that, like it's not going to help. So don't do it. And every now and then they're going to need you for something. So just stay around for that. So those are the reasons that I stay, but I fucking didn't care anymore. I stripped it down to nothing. You know, I still miss my ex-wife. She's, I fucking ruined it, you know, and we were born to be with each other for sure. How long were you together? Like 12 years. And this is, when you're talking about feeling suicidal, how long ago was this? Um, a year ago. Really? Is that yeah. recent? Yeah. Yeah, I made one video because I had this weird feeling that I'm going to get back on, and I'm going to get better and I'm going to be happy and I'm going to be successful and people are going to want to see it. It's kind of like when Tony Hawks broke his leg recently, like two years ago, and his bone came, he's femur, and his leg bone came out of his arm, out of his leg. Yeah. I filmed it. And he was like, are you filming right now? And I was like, yeah. And he looked at me like pretty disgusted. And then now he uses that video. It's in a documentary to show you how fucked up he was and then how he bounced back. Yeah. So to me, there is a video that I put in my phone somewhere where I'm going to do it, you know? And I was like, I'll film it. But if I don't do it and I get back on top and I'm like healthy and mm. running life good... It's a good thing for people because it's like I always feel like when I see someone that's been through a lot and then they're on top, I'm like, well, if they could do it, I could do it. Right. So that was kind of like my theory on that one. Did you get rid of the gun? No, I still got them all. You have multiple guns. Mm -hmm. Do you think somebody like you should have a gun when you have yeah. suicidal thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, I got, man, I get weed. I got alcohol in the house. I got, yeah. Um, it's, I can go get it down the street. I can yeah. go get a fucking gun tomorrow. Yeah. It's like, if you, are you going to, what are you? Are you going to do it? It's, I'm not going to do it. It's always shocking when somebody opens up to you like that and confesses these real feelings, but I don't think it's un, uncommon. I think Yeah, that, I don't think I'm, I know. I, so I feel like it's like, oh, wow, why would you say that? Like, it's, it's like, wow, why would you admit that you've done stuff with guys? Because I have. And I'm, if I die tomorrow, I don't fucking care what you think. Like, this is my life. Right. Like, I don't want to, ooh, I said something that makes me not as cool or as accepted. Like, I don't, like, that's my, that's one thing I do know. Like, I don't need your fucking sympathy. I don't need anybody on, on my side. Like, this is all fake. Yeah. You know, like, I got a couple people around me that really care for me, and I can tell them. So if anybody can learn something from it, because I think about kids that are, like, when I was younger and I was like, I don't know what I am. Hmm. You know, if somebody could be just just admit that they're like that and they're okay, it would have made me feel so much better. Right. But I never saw anybody like that. I was like, I'm, I feel like I'm the only one like this. <laughs> like, I'm a fucking freak. Like, I'm seriously fucked up. And, no. But I'm not. This time, everybody's uh, fucking right. weird. Right. Everyone's weird. So and I admit my, my weirdness and, and I'm do I've never been better, man. Like That's I'm, great. Except for like. I still want to take the guns sick. away from you. I don't, I don't, I swear I don't. I went shooting the other day. I never thought about pointing it at me one okay. time. Yeah. So when did you start to have feelings, uh, bisexual feelings, feelings towards men? Uh, well, I was molested when I was a kid a couple of times. Well, you've really done everything. Yeah, right. I, mean, I really lived. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I got molested by a babysitter and then from my father and then... Your father molested you. Yeah. And I didn't realize until I took a bunch of... Uh, I did a skateboard demo and I took a bunch of uh, crystal meth and acid and then uh, I, uh, drinking and then I had an invisible friend. I was in a swimming pool in a hotel and if anybody tried to get me out of the pool, I f would growl at them. So everybody was scared. Mm -hmm. And my girlfriend at the time was like, I'll watch him. Don't worry about it. So everybody left and I was just in the pool by myself and I had an invisible friend and I was talking about how the invisible friend was telling me and my father molested me. And my girlfriend at the time was just watching this conversation happen. Yeah. And I don't even remember it. She told me. And then she told my mom. She's like, oh, I thought he forgot. Because it was he was so young. He was so it is real. It wasn't a false memory. It wasn't something. No, well up. then well then it started to actually like appear in my head where I saw things that happened that day. And I was like, oh my God. But my mom was like, it's not your it wasn't your dad. It was the neighbor. He had red hair. You said that you thought it was dad, oh. but we came to the conclusion that it was a guy with red hair. And then my dad found out. And my dad, as I said, my dad has punched people for cutting him off on the, on the road. Yeah. And he didn't hit this guy. So that was like a weird thing. And then mm. when I came out with it, my mom told my dad and I was at my parent, my dad's house. And he goes, 
hey, do you think you got molested? And I go, yeah. He goes, you think it was me? And I go, nah. And he goes, oh, okay. And then we never spoke about it again. Hmm. And then when I got a little older and had kids, I was like, I would never, like, if my kids said that, we'd be getting to the bottom of it. Yeah. Like, just, do you think it was me? No. Okay. That's the end of the conversation. And then I did MDMA therapy with a doctor. Yeah. It recalled a bunch of shit that happened in another house when I was older, where he would come into the room with this heat lamp. Um, it was like a big circle heat lamp. And I'll, I'll be on my stomach and things would happen to me. And then one time when, it, when he came in, I knew. So I got under the mattress, under the bed, and I held onto the springs of the mattress with my fingers and my toes and I pulled myself off the ground so I was like on the uh, under underneath on the mattress yeah like a movie yeah and then when the heat lamp came in I just said please stop and the heat lamp moved went back and left and then I from doing the MDMA therapy I I like imagined that he realized right there and then that I was not into it and felt bad and it never happened again. So mm. I just felt like things that had probably, probably happened to him, you know, and I don't know why these, you know, cause this is, you know, do MDMA therapy. Like you're fucking hallucinating. Like maybe the doctor fucking told you this shit happened. I'm like, Oh yeah. Cause I know I did that. I know I did that. And there's certain things. It's like when you do ayahuasca, you know, I did that. There's like things that they show you, it shows you and you're like, I don't want to know about that. And it's like, you're fucking knowing about it, you know? And I'm like, I'm not making this shit up, you know? I, but but at the time when I did that, I realized that he didn't mean to hurt me. Like, he didn't know that it was doing that. You know, he didn't know, like, the repercussions of doing this to a kid. You don't think so if it happened to him? No. No, because you don't, you don't, like, you go one way or the other, man. Like, to me, that's, that's, why, that's another reason why I look like this. You touch a kid around me. You fucking prey on somebody that's that's weaker. I will fuck you up, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I'm here now, but I'm here to protect little me. Like yeah. I've been to therapy, man. Like I, it, yeah. like, it's pretty obvious. At <laughs> yeah. one point, he broke it down to me. He's like, "It's over, man. You've won." Yeah. I'm like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "You've won." He's like, "Look at you. No one's gonna get you now. Like you're safe." But if this happened to your dad and it and it happened to you, I think my grandfather did that to him. Was your grandfather alive when you were alive? Yeah. Yeah. Y you know. Yeah, he was a weird guy. He ended he, up turning into a, a cross-dresser. He, he, sorry, I guess at the time, they didn't have that name, but he was like trans. He like became a lady. <laughs> this story just gets... He moved to Queensland from Melbourne, and then there was a skater that moved to Queensland, and then yeah. he came back to Melbourne. And I was on the ramp one day, and he goes, Hey, man, is your grandfather named Jock? And I go, Yeah. He's like, yeah, I live next door to him in Queensland. I was like, no shit. He's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a woman now. Do you know that? And I was like, yeah, I do. He's like, crazy, huh? And I'm like, yeah, it is pretty crazy. Wow. Let's skate. Do you, do you remember specifically what your dad did you, to you? Mm-hmm. You do? Okay. And what, what's a heat lamp? It's like it's like a oval, I'm sorry, a, like a round shape, like with the like the metal bit like this and then the, the like the orange glow so it's like you put it it heats the room up oh okay but so but like he was carrying it so it was just like big round orange glow yeah walking into a dark room so that's all i could see was just the orange lamp wow and i just know that yeah you know like yeah. i know that that yeah. was a thing that yeah do you forgive you your can. dad yeah you do yeah do you wish? I have to. Yeah, I guess. There was a time there where there was a rage I felt where I was like, this is dangerous. Yeah. You know, like, I've, that's the thing. Like, when I got divorced, I felt, I was like, it could, I could snap. You know, like, if this gets any worse, I won't come back from it. You know, I felt it, scared the fuck out of me. Cause I was like, if you get any darker, yeah. You know, because you've been through so much, you know, and I, but I always, I won't let it fucking end me, you know, like, good. I've got skills, man. I got yeah. passion. I love people. I love, I love being out here. I know I can help people. 
you seem so, like a genuinely nice guy. I am. Yeah. Do you think you're capable of a healthy relationship with a woman? <laughs> That's a fair question. I really do now because I've really proven it. Like I really am in a situation right now where when it comes to the things that I really couldn't, I despise myself for, mm -hmm. they're under control. Like they're not even there. The urges are not even there. Good. Like I used to just want to come on everybody, you know? <laughs> Like, oh, it would God. just be like, yeah, if I could do it. it like, yeah. if you want to, sure. Now, I'm like, ew, are you okay? Like, why would you ask me to have, have you not seen me? Like, you yeah. don't even know me, and you want me to come on you? Like, you've got problems. Do yeah. you know that? <laughs> and that's not what I used to think. Do you think you could ever settle down with a guy? No, not at all. So it's just a fling. It's just. It's more of a, to me, sex is a part of it's it's funny it's kind of like being obese like you you you, you gotta you, know, you gotta eat mm -hmm. you know like it's like you gotta have sex but there's a way that i would do it where it's not i'm just fucking you i'm not i don't care about you but you're attracted to men not really that's the other thing like this is the easiest way to explain it if a really hot girl comes into a cafe mm -hmm. i go don't look because it's inappropriate, and they probably get stared at all the time anyway. Right. So just be cool. Right. If a hot dude walks in, I don't fucking care. Like I don't. Whoa. Like I just don't care. I don't. I don't find. So are you bisexual just to be bisexual? Like I'm you did. Pan, like I'm pansexual. But I feel like you want to do everything, yeah. and that's what scares me about you talking about suicide. It's like you want to do everything. You want to do skateboarding, MMA, every single drug, men, women. You know, trans, trans. I love trans. You do? Oh yeah. Trans, which way? Both. Really? Yeah. Man, had the surgery or? Yeah, both. I've had. Okay, I've I've done everybody. Yeah. At one point, I met a guy who was born a girl, and he had a procedure where he had been. Uh, he they cut off his labias, turned it into a ball sack, and then he had a shaft like a penis, like pretty solid penis, and then a prosthetic. It sticks on the front of it, so he had like a big dick. Yeah, and he's chest surgery, and he'd been on T for a long time, so he had like a beard. And he was pretty fit, like jacked, like a yeah. guy, and with a with a with a penis and balls, with a little vagina underneath it, and they all worked. You'd use all of it. Oh. It was fun. Were you attracted to no, that? No, it's not that I'm attracted. It's it's. But don't you have to be to get aroused? No. No, not when you're me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, interesting. Just, yeah, I could just get I could get it off on anybody on anything. So, like people in the people in the I used to go to sauna and anybody could blow me, anyone. I didn't even care. Sometimes I'll let you blow me because I hated your face. Sometimes I'll let you blow me because I thought you were a nice person. Huh. Sometimes I'll let you blow me because you are a real big fat guy. I don't like big fat guys. But I never had anybody a big fat guy blow me before. Like, go for it. And hmm. if, if you seem interested, that's kind of half of it. It's like, do you, if you look like you really want to do it, then you're going to get me off. So, yeah, okay. You were afraid to come out, right? Yeah. Yeah, because I'm, I'm a, like, I hang out in MMA, dude. I'm a skateboarder. Like, skateboarding's changed now. Very accepting. But in the 90s, hmm. like, in the 90s, somebody found out that I... I took a bunch of ecstasy one time and went to a dinner party and this trans girl came to the dinner party and she was really pretty. She sat down and she was giving me the eye. And this is when I had a girlfriend. I've had a couple of girlfriends where a little bit of an open relationship kind of a vibe. And I was like, I want to hang out with her. And she was like, go for it. And I left the restaurant with her in front of two other pro skateboarders from Australia. And then years later, they didn't like me anymore and they told everybody that Jason's a fag. And this was in the 90s, late 90s, where you could say that mm -hmm. and people would pick a side. Like, no, he didn't. Or uh, the, the only person I knew that said, if he did or he didn't, does it really matter? Like, he's still cool. But that was Tony Hawk. And when he told me that, like, 20 years later, I fucking cried. Because oh. I was like, I would have killed to hear that, dude. Yeah. Because all I got was... I know you're not gay, dude, so don't even worry about it. But if you were a fag, just know that I would not hang out with you. And I'm like, yeah, of course, I totally understand that. At one point, they called me, a skateboard team that I was sponsored by called me on speakerphone with those other guys in the room 
to kick me off the team for being a fag. And then they all snickered and hung up on me. And wow. I went back to Australia after that. And like, that's when I started doing heroin. I went back to Australia because I couldn't, every contest, that guy was there and all their group was like snickering around me. And they, they would like, hey, hey kid, like you want to get his autograph? Do you know he's a fag? And that was like a wow. thing that you could just say back then. This is the 90s? Yeah. We- so I just went back to Australia. And, and then because I was back in Australia getting paid to still be a pro skateboarder, there's nobody in Australia as a pro skateboarder. So I was just by myself yeah. at the ramp. And I was like, I didn't really want to skate anymore. And then I would get drunk, do ecstasy, then go to this street where there's all the trashy hookers that do heroin. And then I was like, what's this thing that you guys keep doing all the time that's so awesome, apparently? Yeah. And then they showed me Chasing the Dragon. What does that mean? You put heroin on foil and you heat it and you yeah. uh, you suck it up with a straw or well, whatever. It looks like crack. Yeah, kind of. And then... Did you I, ever shoot it? Yeah, this is this is the this is the end of my heroin. So I'm doing I'm chasing the dragon with yeah. prostitutes. That's my night. That's how I end my night. Then it gets to, I'm starting to lose it. You know, like I'm I'm starting to I don't care anymore. I don't care about my life. This is terrible. I really want to be back in America being a pro skateboarder, but mm-hmm. I live in Australia with nobody. Like so, my brothers, my none of my friends are even alive or around. I'm hanging out with my brothers' friends who were like Jesus. Like this guy's just here all the time, like because he's got nowhere else to go. You yeah. Know? So I, I ended up getting two prostitutes and asking them if they would shoot me up, because I knew that they're junkies. They're not gonna give me that much, because they're gonna want it. All. Right. So I bought all their heroin, bought them to have this sex. This is like uh, the, 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 drug uh, drug math or something. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> which was which I was off again. Yeah. I'm not very good at math. But yeah, I was doing one of them while the other one shot me up, and then next thing you know, I'm I'm out, and then I guess they carried me or somebody carried me to a park, which is it's really bad area, and I was just up against a tree, and I woke up freezing because it was super cold, and they robbed me of all my money, and I you know I mean I could have died like I OD'd, and then no hospital, they didn't call oh. nobody. I just like came back to life, and walked off out of the park, and I was like. Okay, that's it. Like, wake up, you know? And then I got back, went back to America as a, an announcer for e, for ESPN, for X Games. Oh, and cool. And then Danny Way made the mega ramp, and Ken, yeah, Block, it, Ken Block was like, hey, man, do you want to ride for DC? And I'm like, I'm not as good as Danny and Colin. He's like, yeah, well, you're not really on the team, but you're, like, on the team. And I was like, well, then, yeah. And they yeah. paid me more money than I'd ever oh, made cool. from being, like, top five in the world. And then X Games paid me uh, like enough money to the point where I was making more than I'd ever made. And then Tony Hawk Tour started because he had like a TV show on ESPN and they were like, we want you to be on the road. And then Tony and I, we'd always been friends, but that's when we became really close. Mm -hmm. And Tony was like, I just want him on the whole thing. And that's when that show was on TV. So now people like know me again. Yeah. Danny brings out the mega ramp and because Danny didn't want anyone else to skate it, and I'm good at I'm good at going big and fast. And the mega ramp is what? It's that giant roller coaster rolling with the over the seventy foot gap into a thirty foot high quarter pipe. And this is the one you said you can die on. Yeah, you can fully die on that. And so I was the second person to jump it because Danny was like, I don't want anybody else here, and Jason can't beat me. Are you jumping it with the little foam at the bottom? If Fuck you fe- no. Okay, just jumping it. Okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> just going. Yeah. yeah, and it didn't work out at first. Trust me, but um. I'm built for that. That's like little. Are you? I was going to ask you that because you're big. Little if, knickknack things. No, but, big, big power stuff. Yeah. Mate. But skateboarding is it more beneficial to be slender like Tony Hawk? Yeah. Or muscular like you? No, it's more beneficial to be the other for sure. And as somebody that knows nothing about skateboarding, mm-hmm. nothing. When I was growing up, it was like a look like a little banana. Uh, yeah. Wow. Well, wait, you know that old? Yeah, I am that old. How old are you? Same age as you. Oh wow! Yeah, maybe a year older. You look good, dude. Well, th- well, no, uh, no heroin. Yes, no, almost dying yes. in a park with hookers. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, you know, amazing what that'll do for you. Yeah, um, Tony Hawk is a name mm-hmm. in skateboarding. Is is Tony Hawk that good? What makes Tony Hawk? He beat everybody for like two decades. Every contest, he was just ahead of everybody. Was he innovative? Was he doing things that he, made, never- he invented? 70% of the skateboard tricks that you do on a ramp now. 
today. Oh wow! Yeah, like whatever variation of something, it's it's a variation of whatever he did. And why do you think he respects you? Um, well, I think at first it was because I'm a funny guy. I'm fun to have around, you know. And I think he knows that I love skateboarding, you know. And I think there were certain things that, you know, like I seem crazy and I seem dangerous, but I think like there were times where like we've been to hospital before to see kids that have cancer and shit and we couldn't find the place. And I, I went the extra mile to like try to get Tony to be there because I think it's important that if we get a chance to do things like that, we do it. And I think he saw that I had a heart Mm -hmm. and I think we just, I, I love, you know, like I'll die for skateboarding, you know, like, so that's your love. I'm a fucking skateboarder. What does that mean? It means no matter what I do, fight, write a book, tell jokes, I'm a fucking skateboarder. Skateboarding saved my life, and I owe it. That's why I do it. That's why I announce it. X Games. I get the crowd hyped, so I know the crowd. When the crowd gets loud, it makes the skaters go better. It mm-hmm. makes skateboarding look better. You know, like if you wanna, if a kid wants to learn to drop in, I'll fucking hang out. I'll teach you. Do you skate every day? No, nowhere near it. No. I don't have time. Do you ever go down to Venice? That that cool bowl. I have. I have. I love, I love, that. I love that bowl, but it's a little bit dangerous for me because I'm. I don't. I, I I find it hard to chill. Like when I skate, I kind of get into it. Yeah. And I get hurt, so I skate Tony's ramp if I get a chance to. I would love to skate it like two or three days a week, but it's more like once a month. Really? If I'm lucky. But I just you know when I skate, especially now we're older. We're the last, like, people in their 50s that do what Tony and I do on the ramp. There's, like, fucking eight of us. Yeah, I get nervous planet. for you guys. We are. We're nervous for each other. Yeah. I've I got a little bit in my stand-up about it because it's, it's like, this could be it, man. Like, every time we drop in, this could be it. Like, if I make a trick that I haven't done in, in 20 years, it makes, it's, there's no better feeling than I've ever had in my whole fucking life because I'm like, dude, like, yeah, you know, like I when I did this, this was hard when I was twenty eight, fifty two. You know, you're fifty five, dude. You fucking bro, your fucking leg bone came out of your leg two years ago, yeah. and now you're ripping again. Like we're beating it, you know, like we're we're fighting back. Yeah, but this is like your dad. This is the midlife crisis. This is this is what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid. Is it a bad one though? Yeah, uh, yes, it is. Metaphorically, <laughs> why? Why is it bad? Because your dad at 52 had to prove that he was still like young, like your brother, yeah. and had to go up the hill and he died. Your dad went bankrupt. You're bankrupt now. Yeah, like, yeah. I just see a Thanks pattern. Yeah, well, we got to talk about that again. But your bro- how many brothers did you have? You said they all passed away? No, one passed away. The other one's alive. Did any of them deal with the things you dealt with with your dad? No. No. Are they like you? Are they similar? No. Yeah. They don't want to talk in public ever. Yeah. And I, I can't stop talking in public. You can't. And even though you know that what you talk about in public, what you talked about today on my podcast, is stuff that if your kids hear it, upsets them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I struggle with that. But I am who I am. And if they are who they are, and if they want to talk about who they are, then they should because it's their life. You know, and this is my life. Yeah. And dad talks about everything. He shares everything, good and the bad. Hopefully it helps people, you know. Not a bad person. Nobody said you were. I'm just saying, like, to the yeah. kids, that's that's more important to me, you know. Like, I'm fighting every day to be a good person. I want to help people and I want to do good things. And I've got a lot of... I got a lot of baggage. I had a lot of shit that I got to clear out, you know, like a lot of things happened to me in my childhood that have made me go down some really terrible paths, but I have turned it around, Yeah. you know, and, and, and anyone can, if I can. Right. And yeah. And, and you can't, you can't, you don't know it if you don't, if I don't tell it. Plus this is, I think part of your processing, your therapy is talking out loud about yeah. it. Yeah, for sure. And the I radio think shows did that. Yeah. What What did you talk about on Sirius? What was the theme of that? When I first became a DJ, because I was on Tony's show first, yeah. and then they go, hey, man, like you're pretty good. Like, Would you like to be a DJ? And I was like, yeah, I can't skate forever. This is because I was going to pack 
boxes in a warehouse for sure after being a pro skateboarder. That was my mm-hmm. game plan. And I was like, yeah, hell yeah. And then they were like, you got to move to LA. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. And that's when I retired from skateboarding, moved to LA. And I was, you know, the only person I knew in radio was Howard Stern. And it was like, you could be the next Howard Stern. That's what I thought. Yeah. You know, just because I'm a, I'm a dreamer. So I just started talking about my whole life. And that was right when my brother passed away. You know? And then, like, within a year, my dad passed away right after it. No, so, yeah. So it was like, uh, wait, no, my dad passed away first. Yeah, then my brother. What did your brother pass away from? He stole a fucking, on the same mountain. On the same place. This mountain's not good for your family. It's it's an emotional mountain, but uh, <laughs> my brother... I think you should go to the top of that mountain, bury all your credit cards. Yeah, oh, they're buried. It's going to be all right. That bit's going to be... So, um, I can already get out of the credit card debt right now if I sold my shares of liquid debt, but I'm holding on to them so that I not only pay my credit cards off, I have money to like... And, and my What's comedy... What's with this liquid debt? Because they sponsor every podcast but mine. Who... Well, they don't sponsor me. I bought it. I bought into it. You did, yeah. And they're and because like Bert Kreischer's, they drink it. Yeah. Well, they, so that's the thing. Everyone thinks they're sponsored by it. None of them are sponsored by it. They own a piece. Oh, that's the brilliant smart. part about okay. it. Yeah. Liquid Death isn't paying anybody. Oh, okay. We paid them. Okay. Because we own a piece, and when we sell it, we're all going to be that much richer. Sounds for like it. a Ponzi scheme. Sounds like a, a podcast know, Ponzi scheme. I don't even know what that is. Didn't you get messed up, mixed up in some? You know what a Ponzi is? I don't. You? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? I don't know. I think I think Ponzi was no, he was Italian. Um, Ponzi is where you get people to pay in to something, and then they go off and spend the money. So, J- Jason oh, Ellis, I was, I was, yeah. The, it, was it the cast media thing? Tony and I and the Jason Ellis show. That's how for, I moved from Sir- get fired from Sirius, get into podcasting. Tony and I, and then also the Jason Ellis show yeah. is on cast media. You know, because Brendan Sharp told me. Get on cast media. Those guys are good. They do all these other shows. I was like, sounds good. And then uh, we made some money. And then I guess uh, they just decided to not pay us all the money that they owed us. Come on, really? Yeah. And then I guess they decided to not pay all the people. Theo Vaughn, Brennan Sharp, like a bunch of people. And those guys made way more money than us. And they didn't give, he, the guy, Colin something, didn't give us the money. And he's like, oh, I'm bankrupt. And then I think Theo went like he had a show on it, like trying to. I heard him talking about it. Get everybody to kind of because he ended up moving to another. He moved to another company. I think Whitney Cummings too, right? Yeah, sounds right. But he moved to another company, and the guy that worked for him called me, and I was doing a talk a show with Tony, so I went on speakerphone because I knew it was going to be good. Yeah. And the guy goes, "Hey man, uh, Colin wants you to back on uh, this new company." And he's willing to give you the money that he owes you if you leave the company you're with now to come with us in the new company. And I was like, if I don't come, are you going to give me the money that is my money? And he was like, no. And I was like, that doesn't sound <laughs> legal. Yeah. You know, like it sounds bad. So no. And you tell him, I said, go fuck yourself. And then Tony was like, what? Well, what a, what is that? I might I don't know what that is. And then you know Theo and a bunch of people try to get the money back and they didn't. What do that, you think you're owed? I don't want to. Is okay. I tell you, tens of thousands. Yeah, enough to pay off my credit cards. Do you do you physically want to go after this guy? No, really. That's ridiculous. What do you mean that's ridiculous? I don't want to hurt anybody. Is somebody that owes you that kind of money. I don't really care. Money's, really, money's bullshit. I'll get it back. It's okay. different. Like it'd be, it'd be different if you were like somebody else, but I'm me. Yeah. Like I can make millions of dollars, man. I'm fucking good at stuff, you know. Like, what? and I work like hard. I don't stop. I show I, up. I can, I can tell. So right. you you you've you've conquered you've conquered MMA, uh, skateboarding. Well, I wouldn't say conquered. Okay, me. you've you uh, participated. Yeah, there you go. Participated. You partici- yeah, you participated. You conquered uh, skateboarding for I did sure. Pretty good. Yeah. You done pretty well. Yeah. Uh, radio. Yeah, I did pretty good at that too. And now stand up comedy. What drew you to stand up comedy? Um, because this is going to hurt you more than anything's ever hurt you. <laughs> this is the biggest punch in your face you're about to get, buddy. I feel like this is going to break you. <laughs> In fact, before you go out on the road again, I'm taking all your guns and all the alcohol out of your place. Comedy will destroy what's left of Jason Ellis. I'm saying it right I love now. 
I love it. Yeah. I think it's hilarious. Yeah. I love I love that. You you think you think doing heroin in the park with prostitutes? I love bombing. Yeah. I think oh, bombing's hilarious. You get I think ready, I do, buddy. I'm doing a show and nobody buys tickets. Like I love that shit. It's not even bombing. I'm like you're not gonna stop me, man. No, it's none the, of it's gonna stop. Oh, me. It's the inequality. It's the injustice of stand-up <laughs> comedy. It's when you destroy <laughs> and nothing happens. That's that's what's gonna take <laughs> Chase and Ellis down. I'm getting it from the I'm fucking sorry. guy. Yeah, I'm getting the horse is talking to me right That's now. That's right. You, <laughs> MMA's got nothing on what stand up can do to the brain. Skateboarding, <laughs> little ramps. Uh, Good luck in stand up comedy, Jason Ellis. We're gonna take you down, destroy you. Oh man, you poor bastard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you fucking got it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no, I know you know too. And it might okay, maybe it does. I don't fucking care. I'm not doing. That's the other thing. I've done stuff to be cool. I, you know, I love pats on the back. I got issues. You know, I'm insecure, but I'm not anymore. I don't care about if you get if I make a bunch of money out of it. Wow, that's crazy. But if I don't, I don't fucking care. I'm not in it for that. Like I, that's my skateboard career is over. And when I look back on it, it I'm isn't like, over because you're still doing the X Games. You know and what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, right. But I mean, like the thing that was the greatest thing about my skateboard career was when I was real good at it, and I would go to the ramp and I would fuck that thing up. I could make it. I could make my yeah, skateboard but- do crazy shit. That was that's. There's no question what the best thing in my skateboard career was. Yeah, that's what it was. That's the best thing. But the thing is, people recognize me. I, it's nice. People paid me money. It's nice too. The greatest thing I got was because I could make it do anything and there was a there was a 10 year period there where I would go to the ramp and I fucked that thing up. Yeah, but that. you just have to lower your expectations. Look at there's like a senior tour for tennis and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm going to take you across the street to the ramp yeah. at my neighbors. Oh, it's we'll about fuck, 5 feet. We'll wreck that. You'll thing. be the king yeah, of the yeah. neighborhood. You'll be back. But You'll I'm, be back and then I'm going to take you to the uh comedy uh store or the Latin factory yeah, the improv and yeah. I'm going to Get you right back down in that hole I'm okay of with life. That. Of That's life. not bad to me. Explain that ramp across the street. What is that annoying ramp my neighbors have? It's a mini ramp for like, you know, like privileged white kids. It's for white kids. That's what I yeah. said. It's the biggest white privilege ramp. I want to yell over the fence. First of all, at 5 p.m., right when I want to come outside and relax, okay, I want to sit in my yard. I hear, <laughs> I think it's a car accident. Five in the <laughs> afternoon is kind of a good time to skate. Not for me, never. And I just want to say, hey, why don't you take your kids down to the park, let them get punched in the face like real skateboarders. Wow. You know what I'm saying? That's not really a thing anymore. It's lost its edge, hasn't it? Yeah, it's really welcoming. What does that mean? What what word do you use? Welcoming. Oh, I thought you said woke gaming. No. It's welcoming? No. Wait a minute. I I don't want to say that. I don't want to be involved in any of that. I thought skateboarding and surfing it was territorial surfing is still still you get punched in the face why haven't you conquered surfing uh that that a part of it is that people steal in the wave and then i'm like okay you're just gonna keep stealing the wave because you're a better surfer i'm going and then they're like what's up and i'm like what do you mean what's up like fucking you got on the wave and i'm like you think i'm gonna stand out here in the ocean and not get one wave because you're better at surfing than me go fuck yourself it's like you want to fucking meet on the beach i'm like fuck yeah i do and now I'm like, wait, I didn't, I want to, I just wanted to go wee yeah. down the wa- ra- yeah. the wave and you're making me mad. Yeah. So I don't like surfing for that. That's the only thing I don't like about surfing. Mm. Everything else I love. But I'm a terrible surfer, but I do love doing it. I think that's next for you. After but I don't want to conquer it. That's the difference. I just want to have fun. What do you- Comedy, I want to be good at it. I want to be like you. I want to be like these Tim Dillons and all these other people where, they get on stage and it doesn't matter what day, it doesn't matter what the topic is, they're fucking killing. They make everybody laugh. That's what I want. And I'm not going to stop until I get it and I know I can do it. So it's happening. Yep. Just stay alive long enough to like have a, an, a run what where you, you get up there and you kill. What do you talk about in your routine? Uh, I know it's a super lame question. If somebody asked me that, I'd be furious. But what do you talk about? Like, do you have to address your appearance? Do you have to get up there and say something? And by the way, now, after hearing your life story, this it, it makes sense to me. Because I uh, thought, how do you go home with a, a full head tattoo uh, to your parents? But, you know, after what they put you through, yeah, I don't, they, yeah, they, you I can't, don't, you know, they can't say they, anything. 
think. Yeah. Um, yeah, talk about like all the stuff that people don't want to talk about. Like, um, I think people think it's weird that I look like this and I've done gay stuff. So I'll talk about that because it's funny. It's very funny. How do you make that funny? Um, just about like, uh, you know, how hard it is to suck a dick the first time and oh. you know, things that are, things that are like uncomfortable. Yeah. Made me uncomfortable. Oh, good for you, <laughs> yeah. So like, and people are like, is this guy really serious? And then, uh. I do talk about sex a lot, like uh, you know, sex with like a with China. I have a joke about sex with China. There's a lot of stuff was like I li- I lived it. I really did it. Yeah. So I kind of told the stories at first, and then over the years, I've figured out how to make them punch, like ha- actually have jokes. And then from that, now I figured out how to write jokes because that was the hardest thing for me. I've done radio for 20 years. Like I can be funny. Right. I can tell stories. I'm a funny guy when I tell a story, but that's not enough to be a com- well, a, com- a comic. You need yeah. like you need like like setups and shit. I notice a lot of guys that do radio and then do stand up are still doing radio. Yeah. I notice a lot of guys that do podcasts and start doing stand up are still podcasting on stage. Yeah, yeah. So you always have to make sure it's funny. You can talk about anything, yeah. but make it funny. Yep. Reverse it. Be absurd. I, I'm thing, dying right? to watch you do stand up. I'm, I'm I'm interested now. Well, you could have stayed for like I got impatient. I got impatient. Yeah, I I, I did. Uh, but how did it go for you that night? Really good. Good. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna watch the clips. Yeah. Because they're gonna put it out there. And yeah. you're working with a lot of comics, like Whitney Cummings, right? She yeah. took you out. Who else yeah. is taking you out? Uh, I've done stuff with Ryan Sickler. I did one show with Tim Dillon. Tim's great, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, that's that's a guy where I'm like, man, that's that's kind of what I aspire to be. In what sense? As a stand up or just um to be funny when at, at all times, no matter what I'm talking about. Mm. Mark Marin as well, somebody with a, every time he goes up, I just go, Fuck man, that's right. so fucking cool. Huh. I just want it's not like I have I don't want to that's the one thing I think I I don't want to be anybody else. Like I think it, there was this, when I was a skateboarder. I kind of idolized some people and I like took pieces of them yeah. until it turned into me. Like with comedy, I don't look, I don't want to be anybody. I don't, I'm doing me. Okay. And I'm, that, I think it's a good choice. Like I think I, you should, because I think what makes Tim Dillon great or Mark or any of these people that you like is they are an extension of themselves. Yeah. They're not up there doing somebody else's right. gestures. Because I see that topics. Now, the more I stay around comedy now, the more I see up and comers that are taking pieces of other people's stuff like Shane Gillis. There's so many Shane Gillis mic holders now. Huh, and I'm like, Oh, interesting. You've anybody all... doing me. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Me either. I think that, uh, that worries me a little bit. Yeah. It's well, you got to get to the very, like when you get hot and they flash you on TikTok all day, then other comics go, Oh, that's my, that's my thing. Like the like, oh, crowd work is like a thing everyone's into right. now. So everybody's dying to do crowd work. And I'm like, okay, I get it. Like, you don't want to show your material because maybe you don't think you're going to write another joke for another couple of years. Like to me, I'm just like, I, w- I just want to keep going. Like the more I do headlining shows, I do 20 minutes at the top where I don't, it's not my material. It just, it just, I find people and I do stuff or mm-hmm. I tell a story about the hotel room has some chick wanted to bone me and I make a joke out of it. And those are the things that I'm like, that tells me I'm like, I'm, I'm on my way. Where, where are you next? Where are you touring? Um, I don't know. You don't know. My managers, I just look on my calendar. I'll, I'll tell you where I'm going to be. You should. By the way, Jason Ellis is my guest you've been listening to. He is not a retired professional skateboarder. Thank you. He is still from Australia. Yeah. Although he's about to burn his passport. <laughs> he is a retired professional sort of MMA Dipped his toe in that pond fighter. He hosted the Jason Ellis show. Sirius XM fired him. I don't know why. You're so interesting. No, they because of the um, COVID and people didn't buy cars anymore. They cut all the people they paid a lot of money. Ah, okay. They fired, they fired like six shows. Yeah. And now they got a bunch of new shows where they pay nobody any money. Okay. That's their new thing. That's a new thing. I think it was a good idea. Smart, smart business. I'm happy stocks they up did it, of- dude. Like, I really am. Like, where I did you like do a- the show from? Like, your home? No, I, I mean, when COVID happened, but no, I was in the studio. Okay. I had my own studio. Yeah. You've got I'm a in podcast. Riley, North Carolina. Tony Hawk, you have a podcast with? I'd yeah. Love to know what you talk about on that podcast. A lot of skateboarding. Oh. Yeah. yeah. But also other yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of yeah. skateboarding. Yeah. 
Uh, you can go to orneyadams.com slash tour. I'll be in the desert th this weekend. Yeah. Desert Ridge, Arizona at the Improv. September 5th, Las Vegas. Ooh. Private show, New York City, September 10th. private show? Oh, yeah. What's a private show? Oh, this is... This is where I make the money. Wow. Corporations, Ooh. rich individuals with private jets. Put oh. me on a little jet. Shut. Take really? me places. Really? Yeah. It's uh, sick. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, buy yourself a house kind of money. It's, yeah, I'll talk Shh. to you about it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'll be back in uh, Pasadena at the Ice House September 14th at the Ice House, uh, September 2021, Las Vegas, and then the Brea Improv. Mm, September 27th, 28th, 29th. That venue is huge. It's gigantic. I'm calling on all the what's wrongers. Yeah. But I'm going to start calling my fans. You need it. The podcast is called What's Wrong with the Winnie Adams. Yeah, I need help. Brea Improv. Uh, and then back at the comedy store. What? So where are your dates? What are you doing, Jason? TheJasonElis.com for all my dates. But uh, In his incorrect bio. Yeah. The, and then August 29th, I'm in uh, Riley, North Carolina. What are you doing there? What do you mean, what am I doing? What What club? Oh, uh, Good Nights Comedy Club. Mm. It's good. Yeah. North Carolina is great for comedy. It really is. South Carolina, they'll throw you out of that state looking like this. None of this. This isn't allowed. See, if you, you, you're I'm wrong. sorry. No, Every no. time I go somewhere where someone goes, dude, watch out because of the way you talk and the way you look. And everybody likes me. No, I, they didn't even like me in, in South Carolina. They could, Maybe you're harder to like than I am. You ever think that? Oh, I know that's a fact. So there you go. Calm yeah. down. Don't tell me I'm going to be bad. <laughs> you're going to be bad. I'm fine. I'm lovable, no, man. North Carolina, South Carolina, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm lovable everywhere. Okay. I'm globally lovable. Okay. And I've done great shows in South Carolina. The people that show up are amazing. It's when I'm walking around the streets during the day and the guys in the seersucker suits are looking at me in my big hair. Who's a seersucker? What the fuck is a seersucker? You don't know what a Ponzi scheme is? You don't know what a seersucker is? I don't think I need to. It sounds stressful. Seersucker's like that white suit with the pinstripes going down. It's what uh, people with the hats wear. It's very Southern. It's wow, very... that sounds cool. Yeah, you should get one. I you look. You could rock that. You'd look I could. good. I could rock anything. Let's let's um let's just finish up on what we started, which is your debt. Yeah, yeah. What what the hell happened? Yeah, I had a business manager because I was super rich, right? And What's just, super rich? Two million? It's pretty close, like probably one point five a year, something like that. Oh, you're making that much a year? Yeah. How much did you have saved? Nothing. Oh. I had a divorce, so I paid my wife wife before my wife a bunch of money. And then when I started making real money. I was only out of paying her for probably like not even a year before I got fired. But then everything I made, I, I mean, I lived in a ridiculous house, cars. Did you, you know, own it? No, no. I just rented and vacations and buying jewelry. I used to spend $6,000 a month on Postmates. Like I was living like a pimp. Yeah. You know, and then a party. You didn't buy. think save a little? Nah. No, nah, because I just kept thinking like this is the radio. Never I'm never gonna. They're never gonna find me. It took me, you know, like twelve years to build my career up to this point, and that's the good thing about being in radio. Is like, yeah. it takes a long time to get there, but once you're there, you're good. Yeah. Like Howard Stern, you know, he's just there forever. So I figured I'd be oh, there forever. He's remarkable. Yeah. Yeah, different level. But that's what happens when you get all egotistical and shit. You think you're hot shit, and it's never gonna end. And then yeah. it ended, and I was like, I'm not prepared at all. And then I got into podcasting and I got a Patreon and then a lot of people came over to my Patreon because of me losing my job at Sirius. So it looked like things were doing good and then that slowly declined and the podcast decided to not pay me any money for like six months or a year or something. That guy that... Yeah. And then when I went to a new podcast company, they didn't have uh, as sponsors. So Tony and I were... We had like... A lot of downloads for certain episodes, and we made zero money. Yeah, and it's it was three years where the podcast made no money, yeah. and then all of a sudden, I'd spent my life savings, and all I had left was one investment, and the rent, the house that I'd moved into was way too expensive for how much money, and I had. What a kind of rent are you paying? Six grand, seven grand, way more. Fifteen grand? No, nah, like nine. Yeah, it's a lot. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, you could, it's not even that nice, right? It's just this place. It's is this is the place you're trying to get out of now. Yeah, and you have I'm, a lease for another year. Uh, no, it's not until the end. Of the, it's till November. But what I'm if this getting, girl moves in and pays part of the nine thousand? 
Well, it's still too much. I'm moving into another place next month. Okay. I found a place. Yeah, but you got to get out of that lease, make sure. Well, I'm out of it. They agreed to be out of it. And then all of a sudden I got a letter yesterday saying that the owner of the house is like, no, I don't want you to leave and I'm going to sue you if you do. And my manager is like, you're good. Don't worry about it. But it's still like, right. wait, I, I just don't want to. I'm like, wait a minute. I thought, like, I'm not trying to rip anybody off. I'm, right. I'm trying to play the game. Like, if you had have told me no, I'd just stay. Yeah. But the, the, the manager guy said that I could. So we, we found a place. We're out of here. Like, everything's done. Okay. But I'm concerned about <laughs> you moving in. With a woman, yeah, you okay, make... that's that's okay. That, yeah, let's get to that. That's okay. Fair. That's fair because I'm good at this. This I'm good at. Why have you made mistakes? Yes, and I think. Are you I... married? No, I'm not married. Are you single? I'm seeing somebody. I've been seeing somebody. Yeah, but, but they don't live here. Uh not right now. No. Why did you stall on that? <sighs> because it's they kind of live here. Yeah, you know, there's back and forth. It's it's complicated. She has a house. It's complicated. She lives here. Whose podcast is this? No, she doesn't live here. She doesn't. She has her own place. Okay. But I she know. She stays here a lot. I know. Or I stay there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Who's got a better house? Ah, come on. Yeah. What? You just asked me how much money my fucking house is a month. Well, I don't and want how her, much credit card. I don't want her to feel bad, you know. Okay. Your house is better. Listen, I've done well. You've already answered. I've done well. You're, I've done, I've which done well. Which is great. Which I'm, is great. Yeah. Also, so, it's pretty hard for them to make as much money as us because, you know. Uh, you know, America is not fair. Yes, life isn't fair. In comedy, mm -hmm. it's going to grind your soul. So uh, here's what I think. I keep saying that uh, because I just, I'm just gonna, I, I love it. And then yeah. we're just going to play this clip over and over again. When you're in the fetal position on the floor of a comedy <laughs> club, I'm not, yelling, I'm not. "Why me?" It's I make. I, no, I don't make. It's not my living. Listen, being punched in the face is less painful. And what stand up comedy? I, I am I am a boxing coach. When this, I'm I'm I I plan on being a personal trainer. This is unlike, to make money because I don't think comedy is going to make me any this money. This is unlike anything you've ever dealt. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. It's just it's, like I want to be. You know what I really want? I want my name in the comedy store. Let me tell you. That's something. what I want more than anything. Can I tell you what? Let me give. And you, I know that it may. I see people that get their name. Then on you know the what store you should do, and they don't have any money. Yeah, you know what you should do. So get I a know. Bucket of paint and a paintbrush, and go put your name on that comedy store. That's, that's, this is, let me tell you the equivalent of what stand-up comedy is. I'm going to put it right for MMA and boxing fans. I'm going to spell it out for you. Imagine you're in the ring yeah. and you knock a guy out yeah. cold yeah. for 10 seconds, yeah. right? Yeah. And then he sits up and they go, ding, 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 ding. And they go, the winner is, and they hold up the hand of the guy that got knocked out for 10 seconds. That's stand-up comedy. Good luck dealing with that. What? With your addiction <laughs> problems and your tendencies. I'm, what are you talking about? I'm fine. Okay. I've already, I've lost it all. You can't take I'm just telling from you, anybody that doesn't have it anymore. I'll be, I'll be your comedy sponsor <coughs> because you'll be calling me at three o'clock in the morning going, this doesn't make sense. I go, yep. Yep. I, I'm already, I'm already there. You'll see. I already have. soul destroying. Oh, I can't wait for the Jason Ellis stand-up comedy tour, soul killing. <laughs> Why are you doing that? Because I'm, I'm messing with you. Man. You're gonna, you'll enjoy it. There's so many ups and 50 times more downs. It's it's a tough business, but I'll be curious to see how it measures up to the pitfalls of all the other things that you've done. Yeah. You got this. I know. But listen, here's the deal with this woman. Yeah. I think you're a little bit like too spontaneous. Mm, oh yeah. Okay, yeah. like these these tattoos. Did you give it a lot of thought or did you just say, oh, today no, I'm, I'm gonna fill in this area? Yeah, sure. Right. Yep. And maybe if you'd given it more thought, you would have done something a little bit different. No, I'm pretty happy with it. Any that you regret? No. Okay. I think that well, you think they look bad? No, I think they look great. All right. There you go. I, I don't have any tattoos, but if I went up to you and I said, like, we're at the gym working on it, go, hey, man, just curious, what does uh, that one mean? Do you mind when people ask, like, oh, ask you or look no. at you? Uh, it depends on what you ask. If you go, how many tattoos you got? I'm not, you're an idiot. Okay. Or did they hurt or, or which one hurt the most? I'll maybe, maybe I'll answer one, but don't ask me a second question, you fucking idiot. Okay. Yeah. How about this question? Is this yeah. a bad question? You can go, be honest. Go. What um what's the significance of the heart tattoo where there's normally a teardrop? Yeah, I love everybody. 
but to Thank be you. honest, it was to I got at my my kid's mother. I had an A with a heart around it because I thought if I had her initial with a heart around it, mm-hmm. then uh, women would not try to hit on me, and I couldn't cheat. It didn't work, so yeah, that's not gonna stop women. And she, yeah, we got a divorce. This is the thing, man. I, I, I kind of let. I, I want. I ask for them, and then I regret them because I go, oh no, I'm over, over by myself again because I don't have no f- support, you know. Well, what makes this woman so special that after two point five months you're gonna move in together and be financially dependent on her paying rent? Um. Well, I, f- her being financially dependent on rent is not what I'm leaning on. I don't bank on anybody coming through for me. But do you think it's too soon? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I think you should wait. I don't even know. Well, I already got the house, and I can't afford to live there without her paying some money. Oh. Hmm. Well, well I'll be interested to see how it works out. It's going to be weird for sure. I already like am stressing out about all her dogs. Where'd you meet her? Uh, on a, a dating app. But she's sober too. Oh, that's good. And she's been through it. Like she's done a lot of stuff, you know, yeah. made a lot of mistakes. So we're both kind of messy people that have fixed up our lives. And there's, you know, like communication. That's one thing. Like we just tell each other everything. Yeah. So if there's a problem, we have it out. And it's like, I already know nobody's perfect. You know, like whatever you're telling me about your life, that's bad. Right. Like so am I. You All right, think, how about this? If you weren't forced to move out into a new place, do you think you'd be moving in together? Yeah. I would, you do? Okay. Yeah, I would like to All right. I would like to live with her. Oh, good. I, I love her. Oh, good. Yeah. After two and a half months? Yeah, I loved her like in the first like two weeks. All right, maybe it'll work. Yeah. I mean, I'm older. I've done a lot of stuff, yeah. you know? Like, and it's like if it doesn't work and she goes back to her house... Then no harm, no foul. Yeah. I'm not marrying her. I'm not giving her a bunch of money that I don't have. You know? Like yeah. It's just like, okay, well, it didn't work. Yeah. You know, there'll be a, a conversation and then that'll be it. But right now, I love her. I love having her around. She is, she understands like the damage and the struggles and the, and, and is there to support me. I'm there to support her. It's hard work. But it's like, so, so is being sober. Yeah. You know, like I'm nine months sober yesterday. Oh, I haven't had time to go to a meeting, but I'm I'm going to go to today. Yeah, good. But I just keep. Do you have any like desire? Do, any, no. Any, good for See, you. That's the coolest thing about it because there was a time there where fuck yeah I did. I, I think like, you, I think you're in good it. shape. I think you're in good shape. Yeah, like I don't I want really to fuck do. anybody, and I don't want to do drugs. And I think that I don't know if I would have liked you when you were doing drugs. I don't no. know. If, yeah, I, 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 I would back that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but yeah, you, the, this version of you, I like. I, yeah, I didn't know the other version. I like this version yeah. of me, and that's the thing that makes me not want to, because this is the obvious thing now. I do things, I feel bad, I feel like a piece of shit, and then I do a drug or I have sex to to run from knowing that I'm a piece of shit. So the circle just keeps going around and around until I don't want to be here anymore. That's why it's so important. Like, if you're really hot and you're like, hey, you want to see my pussy? I'd be like, whoa, no, that's crazy. Like, first of all, if you would just show me that. yeah. <laughs> And and old me would be like hell yeah like and let me bang it now I'm like I don't want to see that like that you're gonna make me I'm gonna do it and then I'm gonna look in the mirror and hate me and then when I hate me I'm gonna have to fucking smoke some weed or do some right. kratom or drink or fucking let some so do stay away from me. those triggers so yeah so none of those all those things are gonna wreck what I have right now and this yes. is. Yes. I love me. See, that's thinking for the first time ever in my life. Good. I love me. Good, and you're thinking I'm like a non. Ruin it. You're thinking like a non-addict. A non-addict yeah. thinks I'm not going to have a second drink tonight because I've got to wake up early in the morning and get some work done. So you're thinking like a non-addict. So that's good. Yeah, I yeah, think I you feel need- I'm healthy. Good. I love it. I want you to stay healthy, and I want you to put that. I want you to do a stand-up special. I want you to call it uh, Jason Ellis. I'm no longer a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's you got a, this. That's a good idea. I, I really do. Yeah. I, I'm really glad that you came on. <laughs> I, I know you had some reservations because you tried to cancel this morning. I don't have reservations. I go, I go this guy, he he just he doesn't want to do the podcast. I never talk like that ever. I felt really terrible that I was talking like that. Like I, I was I've I've been so tired. Like I've St. Louis 
I flew from St. Louis to San Diego to do a podcast with Tony and then do my podcast and then do another podcast the next day with Tony and then these lawyer, the house thing and then the dog. And you the, got a lot going and on. I, and I'm like, I, I was, I'm, I did, I did my first roast ever against the person that is the roast battle champion. She has yeah. the belt and I've never roasted before. How'd you do? I did. Go- I good. lost, but I did. You good. lost because you have a heart now. And everybody said, you have "Hey, empathy. man, like what you did, like you stepped up, and like real comics at the comedy store were like, we respect you for what you did, and you held your own.'" I'm like, "That's all I wanted from this. Good. That's why I, I came to do it." But was I stressed before? Because I was like, "Don't just get slaughtered. Like fucking have some sh- some shit." Yeah. And I did, and they were like, "Those are some good jokes." Also, like being a roast, writing a joke, a dunum. I'm a storyteller. Right. Writing jokes is not my forte. And I fucking, I had five or six and a couple of them, they were like, that was fucking really good. I'm like, thank you, proper com- comedian from the comedy store who's clearly not lying. Mm-hmm. Like you would just be like, hey man, good job. Like they were good. impressed. So good. I'm very happy with it. But it did take, you know, I went to bed at one in the morning. Like, I'm, I'm wearing myself out. Are you glad you came up here today and did this? Fuck yeah. You think it went well? For you, it did. I don't know anymore. I'm weird about being open now. Are you being insecure uh, for yourself or for me? For me, for oh, okay. sure. Okay. Yeah. So you're a little bit nervous about saying too much? Yeah, because I've been thinking about it a lot lately. Because here's the thing. I think there were some really great raw moments in here. Okay, good. I mean, you talked about suicide. I didn't know how to react. I was quiet. I don't know if I should have said, hey, should have looked in the camera and said, if anybody's having suicidal thoughts, please call (laughs) 1-800-DON'T-DO-IT. Call 1-800-JASON-ELLIS is no longer a piece of shit. (laughs) So I don't know know how to handle moments like that. My main one is the gay stuff. Because I don't want to talk about it anymore. I don't don't want to say it. Well, for the the record, I didn't bring it up. Yeah, because I always go there. Well, uh, let me tell you something. I'm going to give you some advice that somebody gave me a year ago because there's a documentary I was in yeah. that I'm sick of talking about and I'm sick of it coming up. I didn't and bring it finally, up. somebody said, don't bring it up anymore. Don't talk about it. Deflect. And so if you're done with the topic, you don't owe anybody anything. You don't. Um, so just, I, I, I didn't, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't even curious about it. It doesn't... Um, that side of you yeah meaning like okay i know you've talked about it on other podcasts i can go listen to it there and stuff like that to me there was another story and i think we scratched the surface of the jason ellis story i i think i think you're really interesting and i really like how open you are and i and i really do feel like you're in a good place and it, this is making you tear up a little bit isn't it no yeah you are a little bit that little heart just turned into a tear a little, a little bit. heart tattoo yeah you're good always is a it always is right there. I, I'm glad you came up. I'll be second guessing this. I don't <laughs> normally talk for 90 minutes, but well, I will. I'm not going to say don't use that. Thank you. Yeah. Don't, thank you. Yeah, because you, some people yeah. want to talk about Tiffany Haddish and how many edits she had, and then Tiffany Haddish, we had to redo the whole thing. What? Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I love Tiffany. She's a friend, and I'm actually glad we redid it because it was better the second time. Okay. But. You know, most of the time, comics come up here. And you know this. You're you're a broadcaster. You're a podcaster. I now give people one edit for free, a charge for the second edit, mm. because comics come up here and they go, "Oh, you can ask me anything. I'll talk about anything." Is it because they're perfectionists? No, it's because they think they got balls to say whatever they want. But then when they go home and think about it, and they go, "Hey, you know where I was shitting on that club in Philadelphia? Mm. Do you mind cutting that out?" So there's a lot of that. But you, I don't care. You've said it all. You yeah. have a best-selling book and a not-so-best-selling book yep. that you set a lot of it in. You've yep. talked about it on your podcast. I'd like to be a guest on your podcast. You should be. Well, how does that happen? I'll, just, I'll text you. You can come on. Let's do it. Uh, my guest today, Jason Ellis, I, I really I, I can't thank you enough. Like I said, I don't ask too many guests on. Now we play the theme. This is actually, listen to it. This is actually Harlan Williams and his cousin who's in the Bare Naked Ladies. I want to thank my guest, Jason Ellis. Go to his uh, website, sign up for his Patreon. Yeah, patreon.com slash Ellis, mate. Go see him do stand-up comedy and report back to me. Let yeah. me know how it goes. Yeah, I'm really good. You'll be impressed. I sure. want to know everything. Yeah. Hornyadams.com slash tour for my dates. If you want to write an email to the podcast, that's Kevin. He's in the Bare Naked Ladies. It's a good song. Yeah. It's catchy. I've had people cover it, too. Famous people have covered this song. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, it's a big deal. Uh, go to what's wrong at ornyadams.com. That's the email. 
Thank you to Jason Stoltz, not the actor. Jason Stoltz is the he is the uh, audio engineer of this podcast. Oh wow! Not where, the actor. Where is he? Ah, uh, he's he's. I got him in a bunker. Okay. Yeah. There's nobody here. This is. That's all I was saying. Do you like, like that? Looks like you're doing it yourself. I am doing it myself. I think it's impressive. I'll edit it too. I edit yeah. all of it. When you video. come on my show, you're going to be way more impressed though. I have like a big people, big studio. Well, it's, it's air conditioned. Is it getting warm in here? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll be... I needed it. It's going to deep huff me. This is, let me tell you something. This is, this hot yoga, this is hot podcasting. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. And I'll, I'm going to say this it, it, just because you brought that up. I had Howie Mandel on. Howie said, come do it at my studio. I have all the cameras, the lights, yeah, you, yeah. all the raw footage. And you don't have to worry. It? Like the whole time I'm checking to make sure cameras didn't stop because of the heat. The lighting is variable yeah, and it changes. Too, dude. That's I do everything. You're I, crazy. I got the switcher. I got all the audio. And then I take all these SD cards. I bring them in. I do the editing. Well, Howie. You I, do the editing. I do the editing. The video editing. Fuck. And I upload it to my Patreon. I upload it to YouTube. I do everything. I don't do any of that. Yeah, I wish. I, uh, that's why you're broke. You might be right. I would save a lot of money if You'd I You save forget. a lot of money. But I did it. At, I love Howie Mandel. It's one of my favorite episodes. We did it at his studio. And it lacked it lacked this intimacy that uh, I think this space has. Yeah. And the fact that there's nobody walking around going, uh, turning stuff, turn Jason up. Da, da, da. That does that does do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, so did I, one, yeah I did one yesterday and he, the, the guest had a kid and the kid was like moving around and like yeah. doing stuff and talking. Right. And I was just like, I can't say anything. Right. But what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with Orny Adams episode 124. 124, if you're keeping count. We'll see you for 125. Thank you, Jason Ellis. Thank you. Former Australian. <laughs> okay.